All right, Aztec fans, what's going on? John Schaefer with you. It is the wrap-up show presented by my friend Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. Aztecs are dancing as we knew, one of six Mountain West teams. It got a little tricky towards the end of the bracket. Obviously, for Mountain West teams, we'll get into that. But San Diego State, um, I think, has put themselves in a position where they're pretty pleased with their draw. I was over at Fowler Athletic Center earlier today when San Diego State was um, – uh, found out that they'll be playing UAB in the first round, and they got a couple of things that were advantageous for them. We can get into UAB, of course, over the next hour as well. I'll be with you for about, let's say, an hour here tonight. We'll break down San Diego State, uh, their seating, this game against UAB coming up on Friday morning at 10.45 a.m. Pacific. We can get into the particulars of that as well. So if you are here, please subscribe. You're on content for Aztec fans. Smash the like button for me. Follow me on Twitter at John Schaefer. Appreciate your super chats. If you want to make sure I get your comment here tonight, you can click the dollar sign below the chat box. I appreciate your support, really do. And uh, you can become a member as well by clicking the join button down below. So here, here's my primary takeaway from a San Diego State perspective, and then we can get into it from a Mountain West perspective because there's plenty to be learned for the league moving forward based on what has transpired here today with the league, quote unquote, being underseated outside of San Diego State. First of all, not conference scheduling matters. You could argue it's as important as anything in the eyes of the selection committee, and that's why San Diego State was rewarded and some of the other programs in the Mountain West really were and, and truthfully um, you know, were docked um, for not having done the work necessary outside of the league. Yes, they had some wins in the league, the teams that have made the NCAA tournament, but they're not seated appropriately based on you know winning games against Mountain West teams, they need to do more than that apparently to get better seeds. And we'll get into you know the ramifications of that moving forward for the Mountain West. But for San Diego State, I think it's favorable. Um, I think UAB is a very good team. Uh, they're playing good basketball. They've won five straight. They have an outstanding big man um, who can play basically anywhere. Like he switches everything. He's kind of a typical San Diego State player, truthfully. Um, you know, he's a, he's a big man. Uh, he's 6'9". He's like an undersized big that can do a little bit of everything. I think it'll be a good matchup uh, between him and Jaden Ledee. I'm talking about, by the way, Yaxel Lendenborg, who is a JUCO transfer. He's a really interesting story. If you've watched them play, and I did against FAU at home earlier this year, and he had an amazing game. I forget what his line was against FAU. It was incredible. Um, I'm actually going to try to find it real quickly here if I can. Um, against FAU at home, he had... 21 points, no, 17 points, 21 rebounds. So he's a rebounding machine. He can score. Um, he's a very good player. Um, and that's a significant concern, obviously, for San Diego State. But then again, the Aztecs have a very good five as well in Jaden Ledee. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup um, in this game. They've also got some high major transfers that have had good seasons. I think Gaines, um, I don't have all the information right in front of me right now, but I'll try to get it for you over the course of the next hour. But they, they've got some really experienced pieces. They have, again, their big man that can do a little bit of everything offensively and defensively. And uh, they've come on. You know, they're playing good basketball under Andy Kennedy, who's a really good coach, and has taken UAB to the tournament two of the last four, four years. And UAB has been a very good program over the years. Now, with all that being said, San Diego State's not leaving the time zone. UAB is. Uh, the Aztecs preferred Spokane over Salt Lake because of elevation. They get Spokane. Fans can get to, you know, Washington State a lot easier than if, if they had to travel across the country like last year when they had to go to Orlando. Um, you know, so there's some there's some things to, to like, obviously. You get the extra day as opposed to playing Thursday, you're playing Friday, which I think Brian Dutcher said earlier to the media um, was his preference, and they get that. So, again, less in travel, an opponent that's making a long trip um, that had to win their conference tournament to get into the NCAA tournament, by the way. That's how UAB got in, throw the automatic qualifier in the American um, and they've had a good year. They really have. And they're playing good basketball right now. Um, but San Diego State's had a very good year. And, of course, with this veteran team, I think you'll take this matchup. You don't have to travel. Um, I think there could have been, quote, unquote, worse matchups from a 5-12 or 6-11 perspective for San Diego State. We'll see if that uh, is true or not when this game is played on Friday morning at 10.45 a.m. So, again, 5-12. And then from there, if you can win the game, and nobody's looking past anyone, let's be clear, it is the NCAA tournament, but you just look at the bracket – and you see that there could be a possible date with Auburn in the second round. Auburn just won the SEC title, but Auburn has to travel like UAB um, all the way to Spokane. And of course, they have a former Aztec in Chad Baker Mazzara, um, who transferred in after playing a year at Division II after leaving San Diego State. And he's had a nice year. They're a very good team, um, a very good team under um, Bruce Pearl. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. But again, 
you stay in the West, um, you open up with UAB, and from there, it's either going to be Auburn or Yale in that 4-13 game. In, uh, by the way, this is an East region game, even though it's in Spokane, Washington. So as far west as you can go, it is technically an East region game, which means the one team that gets out of this pod will be heading to Boston and the East regional, potentially for a date with UConn. Of course, the defending national champions who the Aztecs met last year in the national championship game. So that's compelling, um, and it won't be easy. It's never easy to get past uh, the round of 32. San Diego State has done it three times in program history, all of them, of course, since the 2011 season. Um, and we really shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. But that is the path to a Sweet 16. It's go through UAB and then potentially Auburn. If not Auburn, if there's an upset, it would be Yale. Um, that may be a sexy pick. I was listening to some stuff earlier tonight, and there were some people saying that Yale would have a decent shot, they thought, in their estimation against Auburn. But we'll see how that plays out or not. So, okay, so that's the San Diego State perspective, obviously. The Aztecs. Um, The truth is, you know, what they did in Las Vegas was more than enough to lock down that five seed. I don't think their seed would have changed if they beat New Mexico on Saturday. I do know this, if they beat New Mexico, the Lobos would not have been in the tournament, which is a good segue to how the Mountain West was seeded by the selection committee. I mean, they were all over the map, really. I mean, most bracketologists had these six Mountain West teams after New Mexico beat San Diego State on Saturday. Most bracketologists had... The Mountain West teams firmly in the field with all of them avoiding Dayton. In the end, two of the last three teams in the field were Mountain West teams, including the last team in, I believe is Colorado State, and the third to last team in is Boise State. And you may be saying to yourself, well, that's kind of unbelievable um, how underseeded these programs are in the Mountain West. I mean, how underseeded are they? New Mexico is a favorite as an 11 against Clemson, I believe. They opened it as a one and a half point favorite. So they're completely under seated. Now you ask the question as to why. And we heard from the selection committee chair tonight on CBS Sports Network. And he said that the issue from a Mountain West perspective was they had good wins, but most of their good wins were in league against each other. Well, that should raise some eyebrows if that's the case, if that's what the selection committee chair is saying. Why should it raise eyebrows? Well, first of all, San Diego State's rewarded for playing Gonzaga and BYU and St. Mary's and Grand Canyon and others. Okay, so San Diego State gets rewarded for one of the premier non-conference schedules in the country, which, by the way, is going to be a lot harder to schedule moving forward. Why? Because the Mountain West made a, in my opinion, a poor decision to change the conference schedule from 18 to 20 games next year, coming off a banner year in which you've gotten six teams into the Mountain West tournament. And here tonight, the selection committee chair is saying we need to see more of a body of work from the Mountain West outside of the league, yet the league has not taken away multiple scheduling opportunities for the Mountain West. So I think this will be a decision that is regretted. I hope that it's not longer than a one-year um, change from 18 games to 20 games. Truthfully, I'd prefer they go from 18 to 16 and give a program like San Diego State chances to schedule more in the non-conference. You should be rewarding the top of your league, and you should not be appeasing the bottom of the league. I mean, okay, so you're playing around Robin and you have a true regular season champion, but the selection committee doesn't care about that. And yet you're giving programs like Wyoming and San Jose State one additional home game in league that they don't have to then go find as a guarantee or go find, you know, from a scheduling perspective. But that shouldn't be of, you know, grave concern to the Mountain West Conference. What should be of significant concern to the Mountain West Conference is how can we put our programs in the best position to not just make the tournament, but to be seated as high as possible. And the decision they made to go from 18 games to 20 games will hurt this league. Mark my words. Hopefully not San Diego State. It will absolutely hurt this league. Absolutely. Um, This was as narrow of a path as you could possibly imagine to six teams. And I'm not saying that there's only going to be two teams from the Mount West in the NCAA tournament next year. I have no idea. I mean, who knows? There could be some really good teams in the league. Uh, There's a good chance there are some really good teams in the league. But they've really taken away opportunities. And I think the path will get only narrower moving forward for the league. So that's not necessarily for today, but it kind of is for today. That's, that's one of my overarching takeaways from today, that the Mountain West deciding to go from 18 to 20 league games and making that announcement within the last two weeks in the midst of the best season in conference history is mind-boggling to me. It's completely mind-boggling to me. Why? To crown a true regular season champion? Guess what? Utah State won an outright league champion. Championship, how were they rewarded as an eight seed? It doesn't matter. The regular season title, I mean, of course it matters for the players, and of course you want to win it. Don't get me wrong, but what you want to do is be seeded appropriately in the NCAA tournament. So um, it was short-sighted 
Um, it is not in the best interest of San Diego State, I promise you that. And truth be told, for the other five teams that made this NCAA tournament, it's not in their best interest. And if they played two additional conference games this year, one or two or three of those programs would be out, in my opinion. That's what would have happened. So they kind of dodged the bullet and caught a break this year because they didn't play 20 league games. They played 18. Look no further than New, than New Mexico. They were out without winning against San Diego State. Why? Because they suffered a home loss to Air Force. So why are you playing games against Air Force and San Jose State? What, do you really need to play true round robin in the Mountain West to crown a regular season champion? Is it that big of a deal? So that's me on my soapbox. That's my rant. Uh, you may agree. You may disagree. I think most San Diego State fans agree. I mean, it's just very short-sighted. San Diego State, fortunately, because of the job that um, Brian Dutcher and his staff, Matt Soria, do, um, they put so much pride and effort into scheduling that they've been able to avoid some of the shortcomings maybe at the bottom of the league over the years. And this league was very good this year. Make no mistake. This isn't to knock the Mount West, but this is just the perception as well of leagues that aren't power leagues. And even in the best year in the history of the league, you are sweating it out to get your fifth and sixth, fourth, fifth and sixth teams in because New Mexico had to win the league to get in. Colorado State is the last team in and Boise State is the third to last team in. You are sweating it out. You, you, I mean, you were, you were razor thin margins away from having three teams in the tournament. If New Mexico lost to San Diego State yesterday and there was another bid stealer or one other team in the Mountain West had another bad loss, then you, you go from six to three, just like that. And that's how, you know, minor the margins in or how, or how thin the margins are outside of, you know, power six, quote unquote, basketball. Um, again, the Mountain West this year has proved to be basically a power conference. They get six teams in. The Big East got three. That's amazing. Do I expect that to occur again next year? No, I really don't. Based on the decisions the league made to go from 18 to 20 games, you might say, well, it's only two games. Two games matter. Two games really do matter in the Mountain West Conference. Um, so, again, San Diego State and uh, UAB. I'm going to get to the Super Chats. Um, I think this might be a super sticker. It doesn't show up on my software, but if you're watching on YouTube, I think you can see it. But, Kevin, I appreciate your support of the channel. Really do. So, thank you so much um, for the Super Sticker. Again, if you're here, please subscribe. Smash the like button for me. You can follow me on Twitter at John Schaefer, J-O-N-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. Um, thank you for the super chats. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. If you're here on replay, thank you for your super thanks. And if you want to become a member, get emojis and badges and more, you can click the join button down below. I will get your comments coming up. Um, I just want to kind of continue on my ranting here. And I also want to get into the um, matchup, of course, between San Diego State and UAB. So Eric Gaines is the LSU transfer who really makes them go. He's had a very nice year. Um, and they're well balanced. So I mentioned Yaxel Lendenborg, who's their center, but he's more than a center. Like he can play all positions and he can defend, you know, he switches everything or they can switch everything with him. Um, he averaged 14 points and 10 and a half rebounds this year, shooting 52% from the floor. And he can shoot the three ball a little bit like, um, like Jaden. He had 12 made three pointers, 34%. This is not a great three point shooting team, um, at 32% overall, but this is a team that's balanced with, Again, Lendenborg, Eric Gaines, um, the high major transfer. They have three other players averaging 9.2 points per game or more. So they're balanced. They have four scores that average 10 points per game and a fifth score in Davis, JV and Davis, that averages 9.2 points per game. They play eight, essentially, I believe, but it might be more like seven in close games. Um, where San Diego State, of course, the rotation is nine. Um, so maybe San Diego State has a little more depth than UAB, but UAB is a veteran team led by a very – um, successful coach in Andy Kennedy that's taken a lot of teams to the NCAA tournament. And I would not expect this to be an easy game. There's nothing easy about any game in the NCAA tournament. And again, UAB is playing its best basketball of the year. They just won the American tournament. They blew the doors off Temple today, um, who was a surprise, obviously, to get this far after beating FAU in the semifinal. So nothing will be easy. Brian Dutcher's talked about it. You have to find ways to win close games. That's something the Aztecs did against Utah State on Friday. Of course, came up short in a close game against New Mexico on Saturday. But again, they get the extra day of prep. They get the shorter travel. They stay in the West. UAB is traveling cross country. And I think from all those perspectives, you could say it is quote unquote favorable. Again, nothing is easy. Nothing is simple. None of these games are. Just go back to last year, that Charleston game. It was not easy or simple, but the Essex did manage to win the game and move on. And then they really had success, obviously, in round two against Furman. All right, let me get back to some of these super chats that are rolling in, like this one from T Mac. T Mac, I appreciate you, man. I thank you for your generous super chat. He says, uh, Do the presidents of the conference vote for the 20 game conference schedule and can it be brought up again for another vote prior to next season? That is a really good question. It's not presidents, I don't believe. Um, I think it is athletic directors or um, 
someone associated like like you know I, I don't know you get one vote per per school look at it that way and i had jd wicker on a pregame show prior to the boise state game i think for senior night so on the countdown to tip off on san diego sports 760 and he said in an interview that i conducted with him the only vote to keep the conference at 18 games was san diego state it was the only team in the 11 team league to vote to keep the conference schedule as is all other members voted to expand the conference schedule from 18 to 20. So this has nothing to do with San Diego State. San Diego State has fought long and hard against this, but the rest of the league, for whatever reason, thinks it's of value. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It makes no sense at all to me. It cannot be explained to me. I've heard all the arguments. And, you know, it's not – I respect the other side of it. I respect their opinion. But I just happen to disagree wholeheartedly with it. Um, and I disagree strongly with it. I just do. And I, I don't understand why a program like Boise State that's been in the NCAA tournament three consecutive years, Utah State that's had a good program since joining the Mountain West, UNLV playing in Las Vegas where you're able to get games that this year proved they were you know, on the cusp of maybe making the NCAA tournament with the way they were playing late in the season. Um, I just don't understand it. Uh, you know, Again, from a, at the bottom of the league where it's hard to schedule and it's hard to get someone to layer me. And Wyoming's been in the NCAA tournament as recently as a couple of years ago. But you know, maybe a San Jose State, you want an extra home game without having to buy it. Okay, Wyoming, whomever. You know, I, I understand it maybe for the bottom of the league, but for the teams that are getting to the NCAA tournament, Nevada, the Wolfpack were in a Sweet 16 within the last six or seven years. And you want an extra conference home game? I don't know. Just very short-sighted to me. So we don't have to, you know, have a guarantee or a buy or schedule an additional game so we add an extra conference game. I just don't see how that is advantageous. So again, it's my rant. It's not really the primary takeaway today, not from San Diego State's perspective. And San Diego State has Gonzaga next year, we know, coming to VA Arena. You know they're going to be in a very credible, you know, MTE. They're playing USC, already announced, I think, in Palm Springs. Um, so, you know, they'll get their opponents in the non-conference. It's just, again, they're not going to maybe have as many opportunities. You know, this year you wrap up a home and home with BYU. You're not getting that BYU game next year. They're in the Big 12, and there's fewer dates to schedule. Now you're playing two conference games in December as opposed to starting conference play in January. Why? Because there's only so many weekends. Now you have to add one week to the conference slate. That one week is when you're scheduling non-conference games. You just took that away from San Diego State and everyone else in this league. It's short-sighted. And <laughs> I won't be convinced otherwise. Uh, J.D. Gaucho, thank you, man. He says, UNLV, UC Irvine, both in the NIT, Eater's last team in. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. A lot of programs uh, denying bids to the NIT for whatever reason. I don't understand that. I really don't. Uh, good for UNLV, good for UC Irvine. Irvine had a very good year. UNLV really turned it on, obviously, in the last month of the season. I think they're playing at Princeton um, out of the Ivy, which is a, a long track, obviously, for UNLV. But uh, if they play if they play like they did the other night against San Diego State at the Thomas and Mac, they'll have a very good chance to win that game against Princeton uh, this week. So thank you, J.D. Gaucho. Jeff the Cruncher says, I just wanted to thank you for all the Aztec content you put out. I rarely get to watch live, but I always listen to the replays. I appreciate you, Jeff the Crusher. So um, with you saying that, and thank you for the super chat, for our viewers here tonight, a reminder, you can listen to the audio-only edition of the wrap-up show by clicking the link in the description down below. I podcast all episodes immediately following the YouTube live stream. So if you ever want the audio edition, of course, you can always watch back on YouTube, but if you're looking for the audio-only edition, you can click the link in the description down below. Uh, you can subscribe, you can find it on your podcast players, and then you can like listen when you're you know, working out in the gym or in your car or cleaning dishes or on the go. Um, so just for, again, Aztec fans, for those that have been consuming this content, if you want another way to consume this content, you can do so by, again, subscribing to the podcast by clicking the link in the description down below. So, you know, that's the, the long and the short of it. I thought it was very encouraging this weekend, and we had a couple of wrap-up shows from Las Vegas. This weekend, I thought it was encouraging that the Aztecs won a pair of close games, found ways. UNLV um, falling by by four in overtime and winning the game. Utah State um, obviously just outlasting them. They went from 17 down to winning by 16. And then New Mexico, I don't read a lot into it. Three games in three days. I know for New Mexico is four games in four days. I don't read a lot into the championship games in general with the quick turnarounds and playing on tired legs. Um, yeah, I thought the Aztecs put themselves in a position to win the game. They go up four, Michael Parrish is a three. Um, they sat on a you know one, two, three, four point lead for six, seven minutes there in the second half. And then New Mexico with some second chance opportunities with Jalen House. Give them credit. I mean, tip your cap. That's what I said post game on the wrap up show on the radio yesterday. They made plays. They needed it. Not that San Diego State didn't want it. Both teams wanted it. 
New Mexico actually needed it. And the committee proved that today because if New Mexico didn't win the game, they would have been out. They would have been out. There would have been five teams from the league in the NCAA tournament, not six. So they needed it. They got it. They've played San Diego State well the last couple of years, but I'm not reading too much into that game. Um, I give the Aztecs credit for getting back into it. They trailed by 14, took a four-point lead. There in the second half, they seem to have New Mexico rattled. Uh, but to New Mexico's credit, they um, made plays. They did. JT Toppin, Jalen House, Jamal Mashburn Jr. in general, 20-plus points. So um, credit to New Mexico. Obviously, San Diego State would have loved to win the game. I don't think it would have changed their seeding or location one bit. I just don't. I think the five-seed in Spokane was the ideal location for the Aztecs. I mean, certainly you'd prefer maybe a four to a five, but I don't know if much would have really changed for the Aztecs if they were a four. I don't even know if they still would be going to Spokane. I guess they would have. Maybe they'd be in that Auburn spot if they were the four, but um, it's similar, I would say. Four or five when you get your location that you're hoping for, now you're playing a four as opposed to playing a five. Yes, you're playing a 12 in the opening round as opposed to a 13, but there are similarities, obviously, for being a five. And again, you could have been put in a situation where you're playing in Memphis or Brooklyn. That's a completely different conversation than playing in Spokane if you're San Diego State. And I know the Aztecs overcame it last year. They did. They went to Orlando and played a team in the Southeast in Charleston and another team in the Southeast in Furman. Then they had to go back in Louisville, play a team in the Southeast in Alabama. right? I mean, And then they go to Houston. I mean, none of it was like geographically advantageous. And I always say matchup first. It starts with the matchup and then goes to the geography. But I think, you know, all things considered, when you look at all the 12 seeds and how some of those teams are playing, and, you know, we've seen Grand Canyon. Is Grand Canyon a 12? I don't have a bracket in front of me. Um, you know, JMU is playing great basketball. I think they've won like 13 consecutive games, James Madison. Like, do you want to go play James Madison in Brooklyn when they're in Harrisonburg, Virginia? Or do you want to play UAB in Spokane? And again, I haven't watched the film on UAB. I've watched them a couple times. I watched their home game against FAU. They look terrific down the stretch. Again, um, you know, they're all everything player. They're 6'9 forward. Uh, Yaxel Lendenberg is a really good player. He's a really, really good player, 14 points, uh, 10 and a half rebounds, two assists, 52% shooter. But every NCAA tournament team has a really good player. And they have multiple really good players. But guess what? San Diego State does too. So I'm excited to see how it uh, plays out. I do think the morning start is something to consider. I'm not overly concerned with it. I mean, it's the NCAA tournament. Both teams will be up for it. Uh, this is, And you might say, why is this game being played at 1045 in the morning? That's how it always is with the Western sites because it's all made for television by cbs and turner and you're thinking about the eastern time zones and the coverage begins at noon eastern this game isn't until 1 45 eastern but it's at 10 45 in the morning pacific i thought maybe they'd wait till 11 a.m i think the salt lake region their first game is 11 a.m when arizona plays an 11 a.m game i think in salt lake and the earliest game obviously in spokane is at 10 45 so really the difference is 15 minutes um it sounds better if someone told me 11 a.m but 10 40, whenever whenever it is they're going to play right? Whenever it is, it's survive in advance. So they play at midnight, they play at 10 in the morning. The interesting thing is if you're playing out West, you might play a morning game. If you're playing out East and you're the fourth game of the day, you're playing at like 11 o'clock Eastern, right? Like, so the times vary. I think you'd prefer something in between from, you know, 11 a.m. Pacific to 11 p.m. Eastern. You'd prefer, you know, two in the afternoon or five in the afternoon or 7 p.m. But it is what it is. Arizona's playing at 11 a.m. in Salt Lake. San Diego State's playing at 1045 in Spokane. There'll be someone else out east that's going to tip off at 10 p.m. Eastern, if not later, around the country because of overtimes or television windows. So it's just part of it, and you have to overcome it. I go back to last year. I think Furman, in that second-round game, now the game was in the east. It tipped off at 9 a.m. Pacific. It was noon Eastern. Now they were in the eastern time zone, but – it's similar, is my point. Overall, it's similar. Kevin, what's going on, man? Appreciate you being here. Thank you for the super chat, guys. Appreciate you. Please subscribe if you are here. We have year on content for Aztec basketball and football fans, for Mountain West fans as well. Um, and thank you for the super chat. He says, how many wins do you think the Mountain West – see, this is a great question I've been asking for weeks. Um, do I think the Mountain West gets, given the seating and matchups? Thanks for great coverage as always, John. These shows are great therapy. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate you. Um, I should find a bracket, and I have it, of course. I mean, it's so hard. If we're going to count playing games as wins, and I think we should, they are um, units. So they are dollars for the conference, which is encouraging. So the, the, there's two sides to this coin. The, you know, the glass half empty is the league was completely underseeded other than San Diego State, and two of these programs have to go to the playing game in Dayton. So that's the glass half empty side of it. The glass half full is underseeding programs 
only hurts their opponent and there's opportunities to come out of Dayton and earn units for the league. So with all that being said, um, out of, let's say out of Boise State and Colorado State, I'll, I'll, I'll say one win there. Who disagrees with that? Is that I think they get one in Dayton. Now, can they get more than one? Um, it's definitely possible. It's definitely possible that a team coming out of Dayton can further advance. That we've seen a lot over the years because you start getting a little bit of momentum once you get a win in Dayton and you're not going into it like flat footed and you're taking out opponent, an opponent that is flat footed, that doesn't have a lot of prep time either, less than 48 hours because they don't know who, who they're going to be playing. So I could be convinced they win more than one game if they do get out of Dayton. Um, from there, I think I like the fact that Nevada is playing in Salt Lake because it's an elevation team playing at elevation. So I think that is advantageous for them. Um, I like New Mexico against Clemson. I mean, New Mexico is playing some of the you know better basketball in the country based on what they did the last four days. And I do think they're a favorite in that game. Uh, Utah State TCU is tough. I mean, you get that high major opponent, but you know it's probably a coin flip type game is um, how I would look at it. And you have San Diego State. So I mean, it's so hard to say. It's so hard. I mean, if I said three and a half, would that be fair and reasonable? For the league, I mean, this league has not had success other than San Diego State in recent history, right? Aztecs five wins last year. Um, Nevada a couple of years ago had, you know, made a Sweet Sixteen. Um, you know, so really in the last seven seasons, do I have that right? I think about the last seven seasons, only two teams have won more than one game in the tournament: San Diego State last year and Nevada, you know, six or seven years ago. Um, so I, I think three and a half is what I would say. Um, and hopefully, you know, two plus of those come from San Diego State, right? And you can get to a, the East Regional in Boston. Um, and then we're looking way down the road, right? We're looking way down the road. It's hard to get to a Sweet 16, but if you could snap your fingers right now and be playing UConn in Boston, I'm taking that right any day of the week, any day of the week. I'll take that matchup any day of the week. So um, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, it's impossible to predict. It is. I mean, how will officiating impact things? How does the ball bounce? Um, there's so many factors. There's so many factors that go into NCAA tournament games. Who's going to, you know, make a play that they didn't make in the regular season. Who's going to hit a shot. that's going to be remembered for forever. Like Lamont Butler. It's, it's very hard to predict. Now I do want to pull up, I think, you know, like from a betting line perspective, I'll pull it up right now. Um, well, first of all, let me look at this bracket real quick. So again, San Diego state UAB followed by Auburn Yale in that East region, you know, pod in Spokane. Um, as I look around the bracket, let me just take a deeper dive into what I was talking about a moment ago with um, with the league. By the way, also in Spokane, completely different region, but I find it interesting. Think about this. In Spokane, you have St. Mary's and Grand Canyon, two teams San Diego State played this year, and also Alabama and Charleston, two teams San Diego State beat last year in the NCAA tournament. That's your pod. St. Mary's, Grand Canyon, Alabama, Charleston, Auburn with Chad Baker, Mazzara, San Diego State, UAB, and Yale. I just find that kind of fascinating. And there's so many storylines as you weave 68 teams together in college basketball. So, again, Clemson, New Mexico. Um, I like New Mexico's chances based on how they're playing. I really do. We'll see if they play like that when they you know, take the floor against Clemson. Um, I like Nevada against Dayton. I mean, Dayton's making the trip. The game is at elevation. I do think that's a factor. I like Nevada in that game. Um, on the other side of the bracket here, again, the play in the, who gets Florida? I don't have the play in, in front of me. Is that, is, is that the Boise state game that they would get Florida if they win? I think that's right. I think that's right. Uh, oh, one second. And again, we know about Colorado state or do they get Texas? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, Boise State, Colorado is in the South, and Colorado State, Virginia is in the Midwest. So Colorado State, Virginia winner gets Texas, and Boise State, Colorado winner gets Florida. Florida just lost a big man, I think, today in the SEC championship game to a broken leg, which is really unfortunate. But, yeah, I don't know what to think of it is my point. I mean, I've watched like 100 Mountain West games this year, and I've watched like 1,000 college basketball games this year, and I can't predict it. And nobody can. The people that do this for a living, which includes me, can't predict it. So I'm not going to try to predict it. But if someone told me three and a half – and they somehow got to four. I think three plus wins is at least, you know, um, I mean, it is at least a real number. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a significant number. Now you'd hope for more than that out of six teams, but again, five of these six teams are seated 
in an eight, nine game or, or below quote unquote. So, you know, there's no, there's no gimmies here. There's no gimmies. Nobody's a one seed. Nobody's a two seed. Nobody's an 18 point favorite in their opening game. Uh, Team X says, what are your thoughts on unequal revenue sharing of the units between the Mountain West teams that gain the units versus the non tournament conference teams? I'm 100% in favor. And if that was the case, San Diego state would have a lot more of the revenue in recent years. That, that's how it should work out. A especially now that you're kind of stacking everything against a program like San Diego State, and I don't even understand why. I truly have no idea why that decision was made. Um, it seems very short-sighted to me, as I've continued to say. But yes, absolutely. By the way, I think the Aztecs opened as a seven and a half point favorite against UAB. They're currently six and a half point favorites at ESPN Bet. So just something to consider. I mean, that, that's a that's a decent um, margin in a five twelve game. I'd have to look at the other five twelve games to see how it compares. Um, I could actually do it right now. So again, they're six and a half point favorites. Um, Wisconsin's a four and a half point favorite for comparison over James Madison. So there's a two point swing there. St. Mary's in a five twelve is a four and a half point favorite. And then in the other five twelve game, uh, doing this on the fly, guys. So I apologize. In the other five twelve game, Gonzaga is a six and a half point favorite over McNeese, which makes sense. The games in the West, Salt Lake City. I was a little surprised Gonzaga got a five seed um, after losing the WCC championship. Um, but they're six and a half point favorites. So again, San Diego State and Gonzaga, six and a half point favorites. The other fives are four and a half point favorites. So it's a, it's a decent number. You know, it's a decent spread um, that San Diego State is favored by. Again, I mean, it's it's not some huge number. If you're not a one or a two seed, you're not going to see a double digit number. Um, you know, even some of those threes don't have double digit numbers by them, I don't believe. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I think unequal revenue sharing um, is what's right. I just think it's what's right. I mean, if San Diego State gets the tournament, you know, in 11 or 14 years as they have, it's really 12 or 15 if you include 2020. And there are four or five programs in the league that haven't gotten to one NCAA tournament or three programs that haven't gotten to one NCAA tournament in those 15 years. Why are you sharing? Like that doesn't make any sense to me. So it should be unequal. I mean, what's fair is fair. And what's fair is to make it, you know, unequal. That's what's right. I mean, San Diego State's holding up its part of the bargain and some of the other programs are as well. But if some aren't, then it should be unequal. You know, this isn't the big 12 where, Every team is throwing all their revenue into these revenue generating sports. You know, it's just not. Uh, JD Gatcher, thanks, man. He says, Does Long Beach State have any shot against Arizona? I'll tell you, man, um, they have good players. We saw them earlier this year. Uh, the Traoris, right, are really talented um, forwards that are capable. They had a really disappointing year. I, I think they lost five straight going into the Big West tournament and then they ran through it. And, you know, Obviously, their coach is gone. Um, they relieve their coach at the beginning of the week, and they rattle off three consecutive wins. It's an incredible story. I mean, you know, Arizona's had some interesting losses this year. This one would really surprise me, though. They lost last year's a two-seat to Princeton, so you know they're on high alert. Um, they have, on the whole, had a very good year. Again, it has not been a perfect season, but they've had a very good year. Uh, they have a veteran, obviously, Keisha Johnson, who made a run a year ago. They have Caleb Love. I mean, I'd be surprised. You know, to be honest, I'd be surprised if it was close. I think Long Beach State is obviously playing really well, and I do think they have good players. And early on this season, they have good wins. I think they won at Michigan. They won at DePaul. DePaul was terrible. Michigan obviously ended up not being very good either. Um, we saw them at VA House Arena in San Diego State. Took care of them there. But um, you never say never. And Arizona's had some really disappointing losses early in tournaments. But this would surprise me based on the fact that Arizona is so veteran and based on the fact that they lost to a 15 seed last year. That's why it would surprise me here in 2024. All right, I do want to get back to the chat in a moment, but while we have a moment, I want to remind our viewers about my friend Eric Linear at Higher Impact Financial. If you have any financial planning needs, you think or excuse me, needs, financial planning needs, you're thinking about your retirement, you're thinking about your financial future, you're thinking about how to put money away or how to invest it properly, click the link in the description down below and set up a 15-minute free consultation with my buddy Eric Lanier. I've been doing it over the course of the last couple of months. And he has really simplified the retirement process for me, the financial planning process for me. You may need him from a tax purpose perspective as well. Set up a free 15-minute consultation. Um, he can benefit you when you're thinking about education for your children, when you're thinking about retirement, when you're thinking about investment, um, when you're thinking about short-term, medium-term, and long-term financial goals. Get in contact with Eric. Set up a free 15-minute consultation. Tell him I sent you. Uh, he supports this channel in a huge way. Uh, he is a Southern Californian. He is a huge Aztecs fan as well. So if you have a financial need, get in contact with my buddy Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial by clicking the link in the description down below. All right. Um, 
what else guys i want to get through some of these comments that are in the chat and there are a million of them i appreciate the super chats um the super chats i get to immediately great way to support the work and i see them right away it's hard to interact when there's you know 100 plus people here live it's hard to get through obviously all of the comments um you know early on there were some comments about um like this one from paul's nastic fan disappointed the boys were not able to finish their conference season in a better position or get the win to defend our title in the conference tournament but again at the end of the day Paul, and to your point, and to my point from earlier, you know, sometimes you can't see the forest through the trees. And you guys probably listen to me on the radio, some of you do, and some of you have been watching me on YouTube for months on end, and other of you, others of you, maybe it's your first time here. But you know me, I like to provide the benefit of perspective. Um, and the thing is, one game makes no season, okay? Um, for example, um, who is it? Georgia Tech's got like three quad 1a like top 15 top 30 caliber wins they're nowhere near the field so a season is made over avoiding bad losses scheduling well earning good wins um you but not going perfect like that doesn't make your season the mountain west was really good we said from day one it was going to be hard to go 13 and 5 in the mountain west and san diego state didn't and they had targets on their backs and every night was a super bowl on the road and the Aztecs lost some close games on the road they did and they probably had a chance to potentially be a four seed. But with the benefit of perspective, consider this. This is only the fourth time in program history the Aztecs have been seeded higher than a six seed in the NCAA tournament. They've also done it in back-to-back -back years. It's only the fourth time ever. They also beat Gonzaga and St. Mary's this year. They also beat everyone in the quote-unquote top seven in the Mountain West other than Boise State. They put together a really good resume. Um, was it a perfect season? Of course not. Was it comparable to last year? Honestly, it was. Yes, they have more losses than last year. And I know last year they won a regular season and a tournament title. The league wasn't as good. The league wasn't as good. And this team's different than last year. Obviously, there are differences and there are similarities. The similarity being they're both five seeds. The difference being, again, they maybe won some of those close road games a year ago. They navigated their way through a Mountain West that wasn't as deep as it is this year. And then they got that tournament championship as well. But I think when you, you kind of see the forest through the trees, you should recognize and appreciate what the Aztecs accomplished this year, especially with the expectations. There's never been more from an expectation perspective on San Diego State, and they handled it well. It's not easy dealing with expectations. There's an amazing article in The Athletic from the last week. Find it if you're a subscriber. Just search for FAU. Um, and it talks about how Dusty May has tried to navigate the season with his team dealing with expectations. And they're an eight seed. Some people thought they might be on the bubble, and they had some really good wins this year, like Arizona on a neutral, and they had some awful losses this year, like Temple on a neutral yesterday. Um, so while you know Aztec fans are upset about losing to New Mexico in a conference championship game, FAU lost to Temple on a neutral floor yesterday. Temple, who's had an awful season. Or there's Miami, who was in a Final Four last year, and I think lost their last 10 games of the season. So you have to have the benefit of perspective. You have to understand what expectations mean, you have to realize that rosters change. It's hard, is my point. And San Diego State navigated it all. Um, and I think they deserve a lot of credit for it. I really do. The players, the coaches, the support staff, the fans. Um, this, was not, this was not easy. It was not easy, yet they, here we are again. And they are a five seed. Uh, Kevin saying, crazy seed discrepancy for the Mountain West teams. Feel like we need four wins this year for the narrative to change a bit. Couldn't ask for a better situation for San Diego State. You're saying for, for the league, Kevin? I, I would agree with that. I think that's I think that's reasonable. I think some of the narrative already shifted. I mean, people have been talking about the Mountain West all year as a legitimate, credible threat to power conferences that has that is deep and has, you know, four, five, six teams that are, you know, worthy of being, you know, top 40, top 50. Uh, of receiving top 40, top 50 consideration. So I think they've gotten much more respect, probably based on what San Diego State accomplished last year, that kind of like rising tide lifts all boats. I think that happened for a lot of the league. Um, with that being said, you always want to run it back. I mean, yes, with these six teams, you know, it wouldn't be a good look for whatever it's worth to go one and six, right? That wouldn't be good if you get a Boise win in the plane and that's it, everyone else loses. And then Boise loses its second game and the other five teams lose their first game. Of course, that wouldn't be a good look. I mean, the Big Ten's had some terrible years before, and guess what? They still get six, eight teams in the tournament. Now it might change in the future. Conferences are getting larger in the power level, right? Big Ten's going to 18. SEC's going to 16. Um, ACC's going to 18. So it's going to look different moving forward, and that's why I think it's going to be harder for the Mountain West to carve out its lane 
And that's why I've been critical of their decision to expand the conference schedule from 18 games to 20 games, because you want to give yourself every advantage in the world um, to schedule well in the non-conference and to build a quality resume. So, yeah, four wins. I think a lot of people, I think a lot of Mountain West fans would probably sign up for that. I do. Um, let's see here. Uh, J.D. Gatch says Mountain West got hosed and yet didn't get hosed at the same time. Hard to say it was when all six got in. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, the true hose would have been if only five got in. I would have been really upset if only five teams got in. I mean, truthfully, I mean, if I'm being honest, all I care about is San Diego State seating. But I, I do obviously consume so much Mountain West that I wanted to see these programs rewarded for the seasons that they had. And they came within one team of not having six teams in the field. Because the last team in is Colorado State somehow. So, uh, yeah, part of you wants to, you know, complain about it. But the other part of you wants to understand that this is the most teams the Mountain West has ever received in a quarter century. So this is the best year in the history of the league. So it should be celebrated. And again, the overall overarching point of you're coming off the best year in the history of the league. Why on earth are you changing the way you schedule? It obviously worked, whatever you did. Why would you change it if it's working? That's the way I look at it. Um, Okay, let me get back to some of these comments here. I got another 15 minutes, guys. Um, this is pretty cool. Who's going to Spokane, by the way? Who's going to Spokane? Get there. I know the flights are, it's, no, it's not easy. It's not New York City where there's a million flights, but you know, it is in the West and, you know, get creative. I haven't, you know, looked at all the possibilities or opportunities, but hopefully again, with it being a weekend, with it being a Friday, hopefully some people can get out maybe Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, make their way to Washington state and, uh, take in, you know, the, the Aztecs UAB game. Cause I, I think the crowd's a factor as well. You know, I think having, you know, more fans in the building, I think could be advantageous um, for San Diego State as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I think all these, I think anyone that's on a 13 line or better is dangerous. And by the way, out of the 14, 15, and 16, one of those teams is going to move on, right? Don't you agree? Out of those, whatever, 12, it's more than that because of the 16s. But over the, out of those 12 seed lines, there could absolutely be a 14 or a 15 or a 16 that moves on. So Everyone's dangerous, maybe outside of a couple of 16s that aren't beating ones, even though we've seen it, but a couple, you know, aren't as dangerous as others. But you start looking at 13s and 12s and 11s, and they're all capable, every single one of them, every single one of them. Uh, let's see. Uh, Neil says, so glad we're finally out of the Mountain West season. I'm hoping playing a team that hasn't faced us before will be favorable. For Ladie, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot of film on San Diego State, and Andy Kennedy's a really good coach, veteran coach, and has had a lot of success. He's got a veteran team. He does. A lot of high major guys, a lot of JUCO transfers. Um, again, their center is a terrific player. I mean, just turning the film, he's a terrific player, but so is San Diego State. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the Aztecs defend um, him as well. But, yeah, I- I'm curious to see it. I mean, obviously Ladie draws doubles. Um, is he going to continue to draw it? Um, against UAB, that would be my my guess. I thought Ladie did really well against New Mexico against the doubles early. He passed out of them, and then he obviously got to the free throw line consistently, hit all of his free throws, hit some tough shots. I mean, he's, he's tough to be slowed down. So even with a few days to game plan, Jaden Ladie, it's not like that's an easy game plan, especially to your point, Neil, for a team that you know hasn't faced hasn't faced him at this point. Uh, Gustavo, what's going on, man? He says, uh, hi, John. Happy to be a fifth seed, especially playing the first round in Spokane, a possible Sweet 16 matchup against UConn and Boston. That will be difficult. And again, like we've been saying, and it's fun to talk about as a fan, there's so much between now and then, right? Like all 40 minutes against um, UAB, just, you know, it's going to be a grind, like just the preparation and the game planning. All I'm thinking about is UAB. Obviously, fans think about, oh, look, at let me fill up my bracket. Oh, favorable matchup. We get UAB. Oh, Chad Baker, Mazar, Mazar and Auburn. That'd be great to beat them. Um, and then there's UConn. But if San Diego State is fortunate enough to get by UAB and if Auburn beats Yale, that's obviously a very tough game. Auburn is the SEC tournament champions. They are completely loaded. Their metrics are as good as basically all teams. I think for top 10 metrics, basically in all categories, I think for top five or seven in the net, top five or seven in Ken Palm, I think. Now, what's interesting is they haven't been great against really good competition until maybe the SEC tournament. They hadn't knocked a lot of quad one wins. They're, they had beaten up on teams that were lower than them. And then teams of their comparable caliber, you know, top 25 caliber teams, they didn't have a lot of success against. So, again, you'll take your chances. If you can get by UAB, you just are thankful for the opportunity to play, you know, an Auburn team. Again, for them across the country, playing it uh, in the West, which I do think, again, is beneficial for San Diego State. Um, okay, let's see here. Back to some of the comments that have come in. Uh, let's see. Lou says we need uh, one of our two guards to make shots. You're talking about um, 
Are you talking about Butler Trammell or are you talking about Waters Parish? If neither can, we are one and done. They were three for 18 in the championship game. Are you Okay, that's Butler and Trammell, I think. I think Trammell was one for five, and I think Butler was two for 13. Um, just in general, this has nothing to do with Butler, Trammell, Waters, Parish. Brian Dutcher has talked about this. You need shooters making shots. I mean, it's basketball. That's kind of it goes without saying, right? It can't just be Jane. You will need a secondary score, if not a third score, um, in a game like this. So, yeah, that, that's accurate. You know, you can't go, you know, uh, five of 27 from beyond the arc in a game like this. And again, you don't have to be perfect. You can go eight of 23 shoot 35% and give yourself a good shot. And again, UAB is not a great three-point shooting team, um, nor is San Diego State, obviously. So maybe that cancels, you know, maybe that can- they cancel each other out in some regard. But um, of course, Lou, and just in general, you know, you need players to make shots in addition to Jaden Ledee, just in general. And I think, I think everyone realizes that. I think everyone, you know, understands, understands that. Um, okay, so Ridafi, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Auburn or likely second round game. A four seed is a four overall in Ken Palm. Make it make sense, Sean. I'll make it make sense. Again, I tried to explain their resume is a unique one. So I'm at the net right now. And again, they they rattled off all these wins in the SEC tournament, but they're three and seven in quad one, and they're perfect everywhere else. They're a lot like San Diego State in that regard. San Diego State's 20th in the net. They're four and nine in quad one. They have one loss everywhere else. And it's like number 76, UNLV. They're very similar in that regard. So again, they've beaten up on some people. They've played a crazy hard schedule because they're in the SEC. And teams that are not as good as them, they've beaten up on. Teams that are as good of them are as good as them. You know, they haven't been perfect. You know, they're three and seven. Now they won again today over Florida. So maybe they're four and seven now in quad one. They're playing really good basketball. But a lot of their work was done at home where, like San Diego State, they had only one loss, and they weren't near as good road or neutral. They had six road neutral losses this year. So, um, well, let's see. They were – Auburn was 7-1 and one neutral, 5-5 five and five home. They're a very good team. Of course they are. I mean, I'm, I don't know who the other fours are. Um, let me see if I can pull up the other fours. So who are the other fours? Um, give me a second. I know you guys can put it in the chat, but give me a second on the other fours. So let's see, some of the other, Kansas. Obviously, Kansas would have been maybe a more ideal spot because they're so banged up. So, but again, you get the same, you know, matchup in the first round. So Kansas is one for Auburn, as we're talking about. Duke, I mean, does anyone want to play Duke in Brooklyn? I don't. I mean, that's like the home away from home for Duke. All of their graduates are in New York City. Um, they've won a zillion games in New York over the years. So that, I don't think is great. Alabama, like, <laughs> I don't want that game, revenge game. Now, again, they don't play a lot of defense, but they can score. Um, so, I don't know. I think all the all the fours are tricky, maybe other than Kansas because of the injuries that they've suffered, but they're supposedly getting healthier as well for the NCAA tournament. And would anyone be shocked if Kansas ends up in a Sweet 16? I don't think so. So, they're, all the fours are good, uh, and Auburn included. I think of the fours, considering the location, um, it's not the worst scenario is what I would say. I don't know if it's the quote-unquote easiest either. I just don't know if it is the worst scenario. For SDSU. Uh, let's see here, guys. Uh, interesting from Rich. He says, if we beat New Mexico, we might be the five in the West, not St. Mary's. Okay, interesting that you say that because, right, the five in the West is whom? Because it's in that, because the four is Alabama. Who's the five in the West? Okay, the five in the West. Is Saint, right, right, like you just said, St. Mary's. Maybe they would have had to move Grand Canyon because you can't have the rematch. Um, and that might be why San Diego State's not the five in the West. I guess you could have put Grand Canyon um, in the East in that scenario. Maybe. Um, maybe. But again, then your four is Alabama. Is that better than Auburn? Like, I'm asking that question. Is that better? Like, you're not sneaking up on it, Alabama. Not that they did a year ago, but like – you know, San Diego State beat Alabama last year in the NCAA tournament. I mean, you're trying to do that back-to-back years. That, that to me, doesn't sound exactly like a great proposition. So, uh, but your point's valid because, yeah, if you stay West, you're in the West, you go to Staples. No, your point's valid. You're, I, and I, I can't answer that. I don't know if the committee could if you – or if they had already slotted San Diego State in. Maybe, that, Rich, that's a fair point I hadn't fully considered, so that's a very fair point. Um, I guess all things considered, you like the draw – in order for you to absolutely love the draw, maybe just to stay in the West region, if you win two games and you're going to Staples, that alone in itself um, obviously would be a win for SDSU. 
Uh, Jeff the Crusher seen it says seems like nobody in the committee has ever watched the Mountain West game. I don't think that's true, but again, I don't think they concentrate on it uh, near as much as they do on other leagues. With all that being said, they did let six teams in, but they man, they they underseeded some teams. I mean, there's no way that Boise State should be five plus seed lines away from San Diego State, right? That doesn't seem accurate. Um, you know, New Mexico is six seed lines away from SDSU. Nevada's right five C. I mean, all all these teams had really good years. I mean, some of them had amazing years. Um, so it, it's hard to really fully, fully comprehend it, truthfully. Um, but it is what it is, and six teams are in, which is better than having five teams in and having the teams seated more appropriately, in my opinion. I'd rather have six teams in with the teams seated low than five teams in with the teams seated better, if that makes sense. And now, again, I, what I care about, first and foremost, is San Diego State seating, and I think it's appropriate. And I've been preaching for a five for really the last couple of weeks, and I've been saying all weekend long when people said, oh, this loss is going to drop us to a six or a seven. Or I said, got to look at the body of work. Got to look at the teams around you. Got to look at the metrics. Got to understand the process. We saw the selection committee's thinking a couple of weeks ago when the Aztecs were a four. So I thought San Diego State was in line for a five, and that's what they got. I think it's very difficult to complain about that. Uh, but I do think you can make some complaints for the other five programs in the Mountain West Conference that are in. Uh, Kevin says, uh, John, I think it could end up being a good thing to have two Mountain West teams in the first four 50-50 game. And if you win, yeah, you're losing confidence. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, I kind of like the Colorado State matchup against Virginia because Virginia just doesn't score. Now, they defend, but Colorado State flat out scores. It's going to be tough to keep Colorado State to like 50 points. Like, they're going to be fresh and rested. Like, Colorado State's going to score, and I think it's going to be hard for Virginia to keep up with Colorado State. Um, Boise State, Colorado is interesting. Colorado had played really good basketball. I think they'd won seven or eight in a row before losing to Oregon yesterday in the Pac-12 title game. I don't have a good feel for that one. Um, Colorado's got some really good players. So does Boise State. Boise State's never won. And NCAA tournament games, they're overly due. So maybe, you know, maybe they get it finally. I think they're 0-9 all the time. It's one of the worst records in the history of the NCAA tournament. Um, Rich saying St. Mary's is 20 and Ken Palm Aztecs 21. Again, it's, it's hard to complain there. St. Mary's had an amazing year after losing to San Diego State. You're not going to go head-to-head, I wouldn't think. It just I don't think just head-to-head would be the reason San Diego State would be you know, higher seeded or put in the West over St. Mary's. I think it's probably a little more than that, considering how good St. Mary's played for the last two and a half months of the year. Two wins over Gonzaga, um, including a neutral court win over Gonzaga and a road win over Gonzaga. I mean, they got a really good resume. They started slow, but they have played some of the best basketball in the country over the last two months. Uh, Steve Diego kind of agreeing with me, saying it a little differently, but yeah, 20 games a season is the dumbest decision in the history of the league. It will cost the league money. Yeah, I... I you know, I'm not going to say it's the dumbest decision in the history of the league. I will say it's going to cost the team, the, the league bids and in turn dollars. And I think, you know, also in turn, it hurts San Diego State. I mean, I think it hurts everyone in the league. Can San Diego State overcome it? Yeah, traditionally, you'd think they can um, because they've been the class of the league, right, for all 25 years. And they've consistently gotten to the NCAA tournament. But why hurt San Diego State in your quest to make things, quote unquote, even? That, to me, is mind boggling. Um yeah, right. Exactly, Brian. Exactly. And and now all the other Mountain West teams are complaining about seeding. They're just now learning what we learned 15 years ago. Yeah. And listen, I under, I see it both ways. Like your, your seeding should be based on your body of work this year. Like San Diego State shouldn't be seeded five based on what they accomplished a year ago. But the truth is, these are human beings. And Kansas was always going to be a four. They were never going to be a five. They're Kansas. Right. And like programs like Kansas and Duke and Gonzaga get the benefit. Look at Gonzaga today, a five. There are people that would have told you a week ago they're like a nine seed. And two weeks ago, they're not even in the field. And they're a five. Why? These are Gonzaga. If their name was Nevada, they're not a five. If their name was Boise State. So you got to consistently do it. And San Diego State is like a new blood, not a blue blood. It's taken them 25 years to get this level of respect where you look at like the last 10 tournaments and they have been highly seeded in a lot of them. If there was a 2020 tournament, they would have been a two seed. Um, there was another two seed in the last 15 years. There was a five seed last year. They've had a six seed, like when they lost to Syracuse. Uh, they were an eight seed when they played Creighton. Like they've been eight or better seeded in the last 15 years a lot. But you're right. If you go back 20 years, Steve Fisher's first team's in, you're looking at, you know, a 13, an 11, a, right? We've seen that. We've seen that. So I think it's an interesting point, Brian. I do. 
Uh, Alex and Erica, I got to go, by the way, in a minute because I'm doing a Padres show. But um, Alex, what's going on? And he says, uh, yeah, John, great work. Let's go win a couple of games in Spokane. That's all that matters right now. Just go- Honestly, all that matters right now is beating uh, UAP on Friday morning. That's all that matters. It starts right there. You don't have to win two games on Friday. You just got to win one. You don't have to beat Auburn on Friday. You don't have to worry about Auburn. We can as fans, as media members. But San Diego State, team, Lamont, Jaden. Coaching staff, they don't need to worry about anything other than UAB. All that matters because you can't beat Auburn if you don't beat UAB. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. Um, One more comment. Let me just scroll through here. One more comment. Um, Yeah, and this proves the point. I'll leave you with this. Um, uh, We'll love to see Auburn in the round of 32. Chad Baker, Mazar, and the Tigers will be tough but beatable. Let's take care of business with UAB first, though. Exactly. Like, you, you can't. It's a tough business to look ahead in. You know, it's a really tough business to look ahead in. Um, and yes, thank you all day, Ed. And anyone here that's also a Padres fan, if you want to join me and Jim, the wrap-up show, you can find us over there coming up in a couple of minutes, talking about uh, their opener, of course, coming up this week. And of course, we'll be talking about the Aztecs all week long here on the wrap-up show. So please subscribe. Year-round content for Aztec fans, Mountain West fans. Please subscribe. If you are here, smash the like button for me. Follow me on Twitter at John Schaefer. Please support our title sponsor, Eric Lanier at Higher Impact Financial. If you have any financial planning needs, click the link in the description down below. He will set up a free 15-minute consultation with you. Thank you for the super thanks if you're here on replay. And thank you for um, those that have become members as well by clicking join. We'll be back throughout the course of the week. Join me tomorrow, San Diego Sports 760, beginning at 3 p.m. We're going to talk to Lamont Butler, I believe, on the show. And I think we're going to be joined by either Miles Bird or Elijah Saunders. So join us tomorrow on San Diego Sports 760, also available on YouTube as well. Just search for John and Jim 760. Best time of the year for college basketball fans. Simple as that. There's a lot to get into. I have to do a full breakdown of UAB. I haven't watched near enough or read near enough, um, and I didn't do it justice here tonight. So we'll get into that later on in the week as well. But again, until next time, my name is John Schaefer, and you've been watching The Wrap-Up Show. Thanks, guys. Hope to see you in Spokane and later this week.